everybody. Welcome to the Abroaders Travel Podcast, your weekly meetup with thousands of entrepreneurs, hustlers, creators, nomads, ninjas, wanderers, and world changers, all seeking to build the skills and connections to live a life without borders. If you want to learn more about what we do or download our entire podcast archive, check out the website, abroaders.com. Happy Wednesday morning and welcome to another episode of the Abroaders Podcast. I'm Eric here with AJ in Austin, Texas. Today is Wednesday, October 18th, and this is episode 193. That it is, man. Um, 193. Man, they they come up on us so fast. Uh, It's funny, too, because we've got an interview that I think the quality should be good enough for us to to share with our listeners over the in the course of the next month or so. And it was with Scott Brills, and uh, he was there in Bali with us when we, re- we recorded episode one. And he's yes. like, you know, what episode are you on? And I think at that point, I'm like, ah, we're around 190, 191, 192, but uh, shit, man, time flies. Yes, it does. All right, so we've got some news and updates for you guys today uh, and a listener question. Uh, let's start off with the news. Um, so we've got a couple of card-related things. Uh, the first one is a British Airways sign-up bonus. Uh, The British Airways card from Chase has had a 100,000 point bonus for quite a while now, and that just recently went down. Uh, The 100,000 point bonus, though, wasn't really there for most people because it was a lot of spending. And so the really good news on this one is that the the new 75,000 point bonus is pretty achievable, especially, again, uh, 50,000 points after 3,000 spend in the first 90 days. And then you can get an additional 25,000 points if you spend another 10,000 in the first year. So quite a bit of time. And so this could be an attractive one. The card is also not subject to Chase's 524 rule. So it means that even if you've got a bunch of cards open in the last couple of years, you're still eligible to get this one as long as you haven't earned the bonus recently uh, in the last two years. So uh, it's also a card that you can get a second time if it's been more than two years since you got it the first time. Uh, It does have a $95 annual fee. I really like British Airways though. It's a it's a program that's very different from lots of the other ones. And so especially if you're well diversified and you've got access to some other points when those other programs make more sense, British Airways is one that many times has much lower prices for certain routes. Uh, yeah, so there's just nice there's compliment. arbitrage opportunities where the paid flight might be really expensive and the and the cost in miles is very low. So uh, definitely valuable in that point. Um, man, this next one is really interesting. We've got a card offer with Southwest that is targeted for residents of California. So you've heard us talk about the companion pass before. So if you're a resident of California, you have a California address th- with their uh, with th- with this card, with the Southwest card, they're offering a companion pass after your first purchase. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Now, I, I did do a little bit more homework on this since I last looked at this, and there might be some fine print. So I think... Uh, so this is, this promotion goes until November 30th. So if you get the Southwest card, you make your first purchase, you're eligible to have your companion pass. Uh, however, I think if you wait until January to make that purchase, you may not be eligible for the promotion. Okay. I think it has to be in this year. So you can't get the two years of companion pass. But nonetheless, this is a, a really fast and easy way to get the companion pass. Yep. So uh, the regular Southwest Companion Pass deal is has sort of on life support here. But uh, so a couple of weeks ago, we talked about this. And at that time, there were two personal cards that had 60,000 point bonuses and two business cards that had 60K bonuses. And the Companion Pass only requires 110,000 points earned in a calendar year. Uh, but the 260K personal cards went down to 40K, but one of the business cards is still at 60,000 points. So for everybody not living in sunny California, you've still got a chance to get the companion pass. And if you do it properly, you can get it for two years. Uh, So this is a really big deal. Um, It's the business card is 60,000 points after 3,000 spend in 90 days. And for the personal card, two of them are at 40,000. I'd recommend getting the Southwest Plus because it's got a little bit lower annual fee. So $69 instead of 99. Mm-hmm. All in, you're gonna pay about $170 in fees for the two cards. And you are gonna get buy one, get one free travel for two full years almost. You're gonna get about 23 months worth of buy one, get one free travel. Uh, We were talking about this a little bit before we started recording here. So with this particular 
offer. I don't, I don't think this is going to stick around. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, th- kind of like we talked about generally these like really good promotions is some byproduct of competition where American airlines has a really big sign up bonus and then United maybe matches that or something like that. And Southwest is kind of out on an Island. They're the only, Nobody's only airline that. program that really does anything like this. So I had a call We're we're doing some free consultations and talking with a lot of uh, broader app users. And I was talking with a f- person who travels with their family all the time. They've got a family of four. They have family on the opposite side of the country that they go to visit a couple of times a year. And so the companion pass, if you get this deal, 110,000 Chase uh, Southwest points is worth about $1,700 worth Mm -hmm. of travel. So double that if you use your points every time with a companion, you're looking at like $3,400 worth of Southwest airfare just from the points. Right. And after that- Not to mention any buy one, get one with uh, with your flights. And maybe you've got some chase points and you don't know what to do with them and you know transfer yep. to Southwest, yep. but uh, it, it's clear cut value. If you're going to be flying where Southwest flies, like it's it's kind of a, a no brainer if you're, if you're really heavy on domestic travel. So one quick reminder about this, the timing is super important. So if you get this bonus, you want to make sure that on the personal card, you do not not spend a thousand dollars before January first, and on the business card, you want to make sure you do not spend three thousand dollars. You can spend close to that, but don't right. cross. Yeah, that ideally, threshold. you hit the minimum spend thresholds in January. And so, this offer is still around as we're recording early AM of Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if this is you know still there, I don't know how long these cards are going to be here. And I think you know next year, it's you know all they'd have to do is just say ah, sign up bonuses don't count towards the companion pass, right. and this is gone. So lock up if you, and the cards are both subject to 524. So if you've opened three cards or fewer in the last two years and you do domestic travel and you've got somebody that you would travel with a lot domestically, this is a no brainer. Definitely go for it. Um, We don't get, uh, we don't have any affiliate links for this one, but the 60K offer is still there. And so we'll have that in the show notes along with the two personal cards and grab these guys before before the opportunity goes away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Next up, we've got a nice little deal with Amex offer. So if you're gonna be doing any hotel staying uh, in particular with SPG, before the end of uh, January. So this this promotion goes through January 31. Uh, you get $60 off if you spend $300 with SPG uh, with an SPG property. Uh, the fine print here is you've got to book through SPG, but if between now and January 31st, you could be doing some traveling and hotel stays and you get a good deal with an SPG property, uh, you know, make sure that you, you know, take advantage of this Amex offer if you were targeted for it and if you got it because spend 300 bucks, get 60 back. Yeah, very, very good deal. Uh, Next up, we've got some program news, a minor devaluation here. Uh, This is definitely not as bad as some of the ones we've seen in the past, but it's with United Mileage Plus, and so this is going to affect a lot of people. They're also probably one of the most valuable transfer partners for Chase Ultimate Rewards. So this kicks in November 1st, so you've got a little bit of time. we were talking about this before. It's really good news for the folks that are really just trying to stretch their miles into as many trips as possible. Yeah, because nothing's economy, happening in economy. Yeah, economy prices are going to remain the same. Uh, uh, but, I mean, there are a couple, I think, notable notable price changes that you know the listeners, uh, if you have travel plans to these places, you may want to look into seeing if you can get it booked yeah. now. Uh, the one that stands out to me is on United operated flights to New Zealand or Australia. The price in business class is going to go from 65,000 miles to 80,000 miles. So that's an extra 30,000 United miles for the round trip. Yeah. And so that's that's a route that is typically really hard to find award availability. So I think that's going to hurt fewer people just in the sense that it was hard to find those seats Mm -hmm. anyways. Uh, A couple of other ones, though, the Southeast Asia or Southern Asia to Australia, New Zealand, that has historically been a really good sweet spot in the United award chart. Uh, When I say sweet spot, just in comparison to other programs, the price from Southeast Asia to Australia and New Zealand is just way less with United. And that's going up a lot. I think this is the biggest increase. So uh, a one-way ticket currently in business class from, say, Sydney to, let's say, Bangkok Mm -hmm. is going to be 30,000 points. And in first class, it's 40,000 points. 
uh, just really good value. And that's a long flight. That's like six to seven hours, maybe eight right. hours mm -hmm. for some destinations in Southeast Asia. And most of those are operated by internationally configured long haul aircraft. So you're looking at you know the top product on whatever Star Alliance carrier you're using. Those two awards are going up from thirty to fifty thousand in business, and from forty to sixty-five yeah, so in first. Pretty, I mean, those are substantial hikes. Yep. Now, obviously, not tons of people are probably using points for travel between those two places, but definitely, if that's something that might affect a future travel plan, that's one you want to book very fast. There's a couple other minor ones. It's going up. Uh, United Awards are going up from fifty-seven five to sixty thousand to Europe. I wouldn't rush uh -huh. any travel plans over that, but uh, we've got a link that we'll post uh, to a great article that reviews all of the changes and what's happening. Uh, if you have an award ticket that you've been planning to book, I would definitely check in with us, uh, send us a booking request. It's free to send in your travel plans and we'll take a look and see if this devaluation is gonna hurt you. Still a couple of weeks and we can definitely get a booking turned around before before those price increases. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll toss that link in the show notes. So broaders.com slash 193. Um, next up is a little bit of good news, not, yes. not enormous news, but good news. So we've got a promotion between American Express and Virgin Atlantic a 30% transfer bonus. So you've got membership rewards points, so you can send them to Virgin Atlantic and you get a 30% bonus. Um, now, it should be mentioned that uh, before you start licking your chops about international redemptions, uh, taxes are gonna be really, really high. However, domestically, there, there are some nice opportunities there. Yeah, so this transfer bonus goes through November 30th. So you got a little bit of time. Uh, this is one where I'd probably just transfer points once I had a redemption in mind. Uh, like AJ said, the, uh, the taxes and fees are high on a lot of the different awards. The one place that there's huge value with Virgin Atlantic is actually for round trip bookings on ANA. Mm -hmm. uh, so the business class price from the US to Japan is 90,000 round trip. There's a lot of programs that charge 90,000 one way, one way yeah. for that flight. And it's only 120,000 in first class. So again, uh, just much, much better value. The taxes are gonna be high, but not ridiculous. I think we booked one of these a couple of weeks ago and it was like maybe $500. Yeah, I was thinking like four and change, but- Four to five for a round trip, but the quality is is unbelievable. And if you if you take that 30% bonus, you're, you're looking at under 100,000 miles for a round trip in first class. That is hard to come by. So that's one place I would definitely take a look. And ANA also allows you to connect to lots of other places in Asia. So I think the person that, that booked that trip actually ended up headed to Bangkok for the uh, Dynamite Circle conference as well. So anyways, great value there. And uh, we've got, let's actually just take this right into the next story, which is about Virgin Atlantic availability on Delta flights. Yeah, this is really good news. So considering that promotion, we've got a lot of availability on a uh, cross-continental Lifelight business class product. That's actually really nice for 18,000 points. So that's really surprising considering Delta will often charge more than that for a <laughs> for economy class, but you get to fly on, fly on their plane. Uh, it's a really nice product. It's actually a product that I have flown and I was, uh, it's, it's definitely by far and away the best US based carrier um, business class that I've personally experienced. Cool. So uh, it's 18,000 one way, uh, that's business class, basically like transcon routes that are available on Delta. Mm -hmm. The really big news is that the award calendar at the moment is pretty much wide open for this and you can book these flights online. I tried looking for this, Virgin Atlantic's website absolutely sucks. So <laughs> I would say count on probably calling them, but their call center is actually great. I really like their call center. Uh, it's it's easy. They they answer the phone. The people speak good English. It's you know so like not a horrible hassle to book one of these tickets. And it's not only available close in, but there's a lot of availability like further out with with Delta. So if you got a Transcon coming up in your future, I would definitely look at this while the Amex bonus is going on. Yeah, this is like the perfect example or like the perfect opportunity to do it doing it right versus doing it wrong. If you you've got your Amex points, you worked hard for them. You you made the right moves. You've got them now you could transfer them to Delta and probably get charged 67.5 for, for a one way. Like yep. really it's, it's an example of where you can make your points 4X more or less valuable depending on where you put them. Yep, absolutely. Another piece of good news, this is one I have been waiting for for a long time and this even further reinforces why you should consider getting yourself the companion pass. 
Southwest Airlines has finally announced that they are going to offer nonstop flights to Hawaii. Unfortunately, that's all we know. They said 2018, I think these routes are opening up from California are the, the first places that they're gonna, gonna launch flights to Hawaii, but you can connect from pretty much anywhere, anywhere yeah. on Southwest's network. Um, so this is a really nice deal because uh, number one, I like flying Southwest. Number two, their award rates can be really good. They're based on the price of the flight, but we were talking about this earlier. You're headed back to, to Grand Ledge. You're going back to Michigan tomorrow. Right. You're flying Delta. Now you got a direct flight, but mm -hmm. it was 15,000 Delta points. Right. And I was looking at flights home for Christmas and they were like 6,000. Yeah. So there can be great deals here. Uh, and the last thing about Southwest is that you can cancel your award up to the day of departure with no fee. Oh, that's huge. I mean, you, you see a good deal, you hop on it, and you know, if you decide you don't want to take your trip to Hawaii or wherever, or Mexico, then you just, you know. It's the chance to book those speculative flights, you know. Right, just really, like, yeah. Hey, maybe we'll go to Hawaii next winter. What Might would, be, well put it on what the would be the next best uh, option as far as if you, like what would it be, like 50 bucks, 75 bucks? Singapore is pretty good. So Singapore is like $30 yeah. uh, to, to make a change. I think they're they're the, the next place leader in reasonable change fees. But uh, yeah, Southwest can't beat it. Just, just and you don't even have to call. You just get on the website and you just yeah, oh, uh, like my points back. That's simple. Uh, man, this next one is, it's almost like a mistake Amex offer. <laughs> it's a mistake fair so, Amex award. Uh, what we've got is, uh, it's a targeted Amex offer we're guessing for business card holders. So if you spend $300 on advertisements with Yelp, you get 30,000 Amex membership rewards points. Now we're not 100% sure if there's any fine print we're missing here, or you need to like engage in some long-term contract with Yelp, but on the surface, this looks, it's its too good to be true, it's great. Yeah, so I tried to sign a broader sub immediately. We got targeted on our business rewards gold card, and uh, I tried to, to sign up a broaders for the, the Yelp advertising, uh, waiting on them to verify our business. So hopefully by next week, we'll have an update uh, on whether this works or whether they presented us with some sort of like long-term advertising contract. But uh, definitely take a look, see if you're targeted. And I would recommend uh, finding a way, like you can literally redeem 30,000 Amex points for just $300 cash. So it's a, you know, a wash there. Yeah, the worst it's, case scenario. It's, it's normally going to be worth, you know, it's a one-way flight to, to South America or that Transcon flight we were talking about mm -hmm. a minute ago. Um, you know, you could get one and a half of those. Yeah, those there's, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, fairly straightforward ways that you could get two times the value out of that. If you call it two cents per point, that's, yeah. you know, you can do better. And depending on your situation, if you need some Amex points, just want to top up your account to get to the point now that you're booking that, you know, business class flight, really, really good opportunity. And you may be seeing a broader's on Yelp and you, very soon. Very yeah, soon. for all the folks. We're going to have to come up with a headquarters, man. I guess Capital Factory. Capital Factory, 701 Brazos. Yeah, we're on Brazos Street. Don't don't show up in person. Just just uh, find us online and we'll help you with those flights. Do leave us a good review, though. Yes, please. Yeah, we don't want to get trashed on Yelp. All right. Uh, so that's that's about it for the, the main news and updates. We've got a couple of news stories to go through in the rundown. These are the items that just probably aren't awesome deals, but might apply specifically to some of you. So we're just going to mention a few highlights and you can find the links to get more information in the show notes, which is broaders.com slash 193. Want to lead us off? Yeah. So the first one is a 50,000 United miles bonus with their club card. We're not thrilled about it because there's a $450 annual fee with that card and just the sign up bonus versus the benefits. It just, we don't think it's a great value considering of other offers that are out there. Yeah, there's better $450 yeah. cards out there for sure. Next up, uh, there's a bonus going on right now to convert hotel points into United Miles. It's a 30% bonus. Now, uh, the number one that would normally come to mind is SPG, but they have a really crappy transfer mm -hmm. ratio to United. So you don't want to do that. But SPG points can convert to Marriott, and Marriott has a really nice yeah. nights and flights deal where you get like a package booking for seven nights in a hotel, and you get a bunch of miles. So this is a time where using that Marriott bonus could be a really good deal for you. Yeah, I think an example of that would be like you can turn ninety thousand SPG points into seven nights at a category one through five, and get one hundred fifty one hundred fifty seven thousand United miles. Yeah, that's like, about right. That sounds about right. Anyways, check that one out. It's only going to help you out if you've got Marriott or SPG, but could be a really good deal for those folks. Yeah. Next up is uh, we're saying goodbye to Air Berlin. Uh, it's official now. 
Uh, they're going to be shutting down by October 28th. Uh, kind of a, a nasty situation. Uh, One Mile at a Time had a pretty good blog post on it with interesting uh, comments. A lot of like aviation industry folks uh, kind of chiming in. So 8,500 employees that are going to be looking for looking for a job. Wow. So yeah, it's too bad. It definitely hurts hurts Europe for Star uh, for One World Alliance. Uh, right. And, and I used Airbus. It's, not, all it's the not the first one. It's I think you know the. It, I think One World has a worse track record with having airlines go OB than the others, at least per the per the comments from yeah. some people that seem like they really uh, take deep dives into aviation. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I can't be far behind. I mean, everybody's been waiting. Yeah, didn't they get like a fine, they got like another little They're mini bailout onto oh, the man. Italian government? I think. Yeah, nasty situation. All right, so next up, we've got an Alaska uh, offer, a flash sale on the purchase of miles. The problem here is that they make you buy them in fifteen mile, fifteen thousand mile increments, and you can only—they're uh, only offering this thirty percent discount for the first two thousand people. So if you listen to this at eight oh one a.m. tomorrow, who uh, knows? You know, maybe maybe it's still there. Uh, possibly worth checking out, but nothing to uh, to go crazy over. So today we have a listener question uh, that comes in from Chirag. I uh, hope I'm saying that correctly. He's got a question uh, that hopefully will be helpful for folks that are outside the US, uh, don't have access to rewards cards, or also for folks that can't earn rewards points maybe because of a credit problem or just are kind of maxed out on cards. So he's looking to book a trip from Amsterdam to Mumbai, and he wants to get a first class ticket. And since he doesn't have access to a bunch of frequent flyer miles, he was looking at options for buying miles uh, and traveling from the Netherlands to India and basically getting a cheaper business class ticket by buying miles right. and using an award instead of just buying a ticket uh, for the retail cost. Lots of times these tickets, especially between Europe and India, can be $4,000, $5,000 or more. And the first class can be even higher than that. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of good opportunities. At the moment, there aren't any awesome buy miles promotions going on that really make this super attractive. Um, but I want to just kind of run through the, the main ideas here and give a couple of examples of programs to keep an eye on for those opportunities. So first of all, the two of the programs that are probably easiest to make this work, especially for the route from Europe to India, are going to be United Mileage Plus and Avianca Life Miles. And the reason for that is that Star Alliance has a lot of airlines in Europe and also India's flagship carrier, uh, Air India, is in Star Alliance as well. So there's going to be more options in terms of award tickets for that particular route. Uh, the other program that I keep an eye on because they do tend to have good mileage purchase deals from time to time is American Airlines. Um, but there's a little bit of a drawback because there's going to be fewer options to fly from Europe to India using Americans partners. Obviously, American doesn't operate any routes. Pretty sure there's no Fifth Freedom routes that are going to help out there. So you're going to be booking on One World Partners and a lot of the most valuable partners. And unfortunately, the best ones uh, for business class are carriers that are based in the Middle East, which can be a little bit of a trap as far as award booking. So I'm going to come back to that in just a second here. Uh, so with United, uh, we've got 90,000 for business class. Now, I know you're looking for first, but it's good to, ha good to have both options here. Uh, and 120,000 for first class round trip. Uh, and then Avianca has the same pricing. So either of those programs are pretty much interchangeable. You could buy either type of miles. If the award availability is there, mm -hmm. you should be able to book those tickets. Now, the American option, the reason that that's a problem is that American has this third region transit rule exception. And we run into this all the time booking tickets because lots of times you're going to want to connect in a different region on the way to your destination. It just makes it easier in terms of uh, the routing and in terms of finding availability. So if you're going to fly from Europe to India, American Airlines award chart for One World Partners says that the price should be 42,500 miles in business class and 62,500 miles in first class, which is a really good deal. Yeah, and that's, so that's for a one way. So in business class from Europe to India would be 85,000 miles. However, like you said, it's not that simple because of some of these routing rules and and what you're allowed to do as far as your where your connection is, where your layover is going to be. Exactly. So first off, we pretty much want to rule out British Airways. There may be some opportunities there, but if you're going to buy miles, you're also in a position where you're going to pay really high fuel surcharges 
uh, for any flights coming out of London, especially. And so British Airways is probably not going to be a great value when you buy miles because you're going to pay close to $1,000 for a first class ticket in taxes and fees. So the European carriers that go directly from Europe to India that could take advantage of those prices, 85,000 or 125 round trip would be uh, Iberia, it would be Finnair, and Air Berlin is no more. So yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. <laughs> that one's not available. Um, I think I'm missing one. Is uh, Finnair and Iberia. Iberia's taxes and fees can be a little bit higher too. So Finnair is potentially one of the only options that, that you can make this work and get the lower price. The really good partners, Etihad, Qatar, and Royal Jordanian present a problem because uh, one of the rules is that if you stop in the Middle East on the way to India, instead of paying the Europe to India price, you pay the Europe to Middle East price and then separately pay Middle East to India. And it just so happens that it's the exact same price to fly from Europe to the Middle East as it is to fly from Europe to India. So you're going to pay basically 85000 just to get to your connection in either Doha or Abu Dhabi or uh, what's the capital of Jordan? Uh, that's Amman. a good question. Amman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so and the Middle East to India is going to be 30000 and 40000 uh, for that connection. So overall... You're gonna pay. Uh, let's see here. You pay an extra sixty thousand points, so an extra sixty thousand on top of eighty-five, which would take it to one hundred and forty-five thousand miles in business class. So that's getting pretty high when you talk about buying miles and what kind of deal you can get. Yeah. So uh, to kind of bring this back, I'd say best programs to look at for sure are gonna be United and Avianca because they have more sales. The other program that you might take a look at is Alaska and their frequent flyer program. They don't have super frequent discounted mileage sales, but occasionally they do. We mentioned one earlier that has uh, for a smaller number of miles, that's not gonna be helpful for this particular trip because you're gonna need a lot more, but that's another program to keep an eye on. And the nice thing with Alaska uh, is that they have great flexibility with stopover. So it's possible potentially uh, to book a stopover on a one-way ticket. There could possibly be a, a, a setup here where you don't have availability with the same airline in both directions. And so you buy half the miles you need, buy a one-way yeah, with you United two one ways. and buy a one-way with Alaska and a nice bonus there would be with Alaska, you could stop in the middle. Alaska's partners with Emirates. So that's uh, their first class tickets with Alaska are pretty expensive. So that might not work out so well, but I'd say, you know, potentially if the availability is open and you catch a mileage sale, you could be looking at a business class ticket for uh, just over $2,000, which is potentially going to be a big savings. And it seems like that's uh, based on the question. That seems like more or less in the budget. So uh, thank you very much for the question and best of luck. Uh, hopefully we'll see some good mileage sales coming around. Soon. Yeah, if you have any any success uh, with that little stunt there with buying miles and booking for a business class at a good redemption, definitely let us know. I mean, maybe there's something that we're not seeing here that somebody else finds and we can share with the community. And that's all for today's show. Thank you, everybody. If you're looking for show notes, you can check them out at abroaders.com slash 193. Hey, Abroaders, don't be shy. Hop over to the website and join our email list for exclusive travel hacking content. If you like what we're up to, the best way you can support the show is by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Lastly, we would love to hear from you. So send your show feedback to Eric or AJ at abroaders.com. We will see you next week.